My talk today is on propagating plants and cultivating friendships. I'm a good propagator and I've learned a lot, but I've learned a lot from all the people that have brought me plants or helped me along the way. So here we go. We're going to start out with Joe Clements. Um, and all of you know Joe, uh, another good Joe. He, uh, here he is in, in Chile, uh, standing in front of a Copiapoa. I hope I got the, the name right here. And um, I met Joe uh, many, many years ago, and um, I actually um, went to a meeting for the San Gabriel Club, and I think they're one of the hosts here. And, um, and afterwards, um, they said there's a workshop, and it's a plant propagation workshop. And I said, oh. But it was like at like 8.30 at night or something, and I drove all the way up there, and it was, it was fantastic. I learned so much. And that's, that's kind of sparked my interest in propagating plants. So, um, and, and we'll talk about Joe a little bit later. He has, he has some, uh, many other attributes that helped me out. Now this is a classic picture here. And it's too bad that, now Woody's here, but John Traeger is not here. And I wish he was. But this is a picture taking at, taken, I'm pretty sure, at uh, one of the inner city shows. And um, I don't know if they're, if they're like flexing their arms or they're saying, okay, who can hold this camera longer? Uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot going on in that picture there. But um, when I first met Woody Minich, and this is a little bit about Woody here, he looked just like this. Uh, I met Woody back in the 80s. Um, and what I was doing at the time is I had bought a house, this is before I was married to my current wife, I bought a house with a friend in Orange and we were at the mall one day shopping for some stuff and, and there was Woody with a, a big cactus uh, sale and a lot of plants and I walked up and I said like what is this and he said oh well you have to get you know come here and I'll show you all this stuff. It was, it was wonderful, and he just kind of grabbed me and said, hey, you know, you're going you're gonna to love this. You're gonna, you should buy this pack of podium. You should get this. You should get that. And, and we did. We bought a bunch of plants. We ended up landscaping the whole front yard with succulents. And, um, and Woody, you were a big, uh, a big person, you know, to, to push me along in that. Started joining the clubs and, and started um, getting interested in a lot of different plants. So the next slide here we're going to see is we're going to see a plant that I saw in one of the shows that I fell totally, totally in love with, and that's Fucaria purposei. Um, these, these are some uh, habitat shots, and this is taken at Petitlan, Petlanco, Petlanco uh, right on the border of Oaxaca and Puebla. And Woody had taken these shots. He was uh, so generous to donate these to me for the show. Um, I just love these plants. And this was one of my first uh, introductions into propagation. So there's a few more. This isn't spectacular. It almost looks like it fell over and then just grew right along the ground. Or the seedlings were grown right by the rock and just snaked along. Spectacular shot. I still haven't gone there. I've grown plenty of these, but I still have not gone there. I'd love to someday. Another spectacular one. Okay, so, so what happened is um, I got a job working at the, at the college. Um, you know, what I did was uh, when I walked into the department, I took all the classes there. And um, they, uh, they saw that I was so enthusiastic about succulents is that they offered me a job there. And it was a part-time position. I was making $6 an hour in 1997. Um, I had other landscape jobs that I was working on, so, so at least I wasn't quite broke. Um, but uh, in September of that year, after um, I think it was the inner city show, uh, Woody and I got together. And Woody said, how would you like to propagate some of these plants? He brought over, and it's, I, I kick myself to this day because I never took pictures, he brought over all of his purpose I uh, collected plants in show pots and we took over a hundred cuttings and almost all of them rooted uh, Woody was very generous I, I, I only wanted a few but he gave me like 15 plants 
And so um, I grew those plants on, and um, this is what they look like as they came out of the propagation unit, fully rooted, ready to go. And this is what they look like eight years later in August of 2005. Now, 2004 was a, it was a very, very rainy year. I don't know if that helped, helped this at all. Um, these plants need to get quite old to, to flower. <laughs> Uh, at least probably eight to ten years. They have to get up to size. And the problem with these plants is they, they don't self. You need two different clones. And uh, I was told that, and of course I never even, I said, no, I'm, I'll try it anyway. And they were right, it did not. They will not self. They will not self. So, um, so here we are, um, this is December 2005, it was a banner year, 2005, 2006, and 2007. This plant on the right, this is uh, Vince Bosta's plant, and this is another one of his plants. He, he said, hey, these plants are in flower. Uh, let me bring them over, and uh, we'll see if we can get some plants, uh, some seedlings. And like I said, it was a banner year. Um, the other plants that I had in the collection also flowered, and, and so we had plenty, plenty of seedlings. Uh, here they are in the greenhouse. Um, they, it, it's interesting because the, um, usually the greenhouses are full in December, and these plants bloom usually November, December here in Southern California. So it was perfect because what happens is all the poinsettias are gone by the 1st of December. So all the greenhouses are empty. So I move all the plants into the greenhouse so I can control pollinate them. And, uh, and that way you have a, a lot better, um, like I said, control over, over them. It's hard to see, but you can see these, these plants do have uh, some seed set on them. There's some here, there's some set up here. And um, so like, again, I said it was a banner year. And, and that year uh, we did offer these plants to the ISI. Um, uh, John, uh, John Traeger listed this. So it was a wonderful thing. Here we are, you know, we had collected plants, um, we took cuttings, and you know, eight years later, or actually almost ten years later, uh, here, they are, here these plants are out. Now, it was funny because, um, uh, you know, I went through all this to get this, and it's funny because I remember Woody telling me, oh, there's a whole bunch of these out now. Somebody went down to Mexico and collected a bunch of seed illegally. And I said, well, that's okay, because here we have done it legally, and, and, and Traeger wouldn't have taken these, you know, because, you know, they want plants that are cultivated plants, not collected. So here they are after flowering, they're outside taking a little bit of a breather after producing all those seeds. And this is alongside one of the greenhouses. An interesting thing that people say that um, will, will uh, plants that come from cuttings, will they come true? Will they form that nice big base? Well, here you can see they do. They do, definitely. And uh, here's the plant. Uh, this was just taken here in May. This is a rooted cutting from 1997. So it shows you um, that. One thing that I can tell you about when you grow these plants, they get really bushy. And what you want to do is you want to go through and remove a lot of these lower branches, cut them off. I learned that from Woody, I learned it from Steve Southwell. If you want a good show plant, you want to go in there and prune those when they're very, very young. And so they won't leave a lot of scarring. So you can get that really good look. Um, this, is a, this is my old house in orange. And um, uh, my roommate and I, my old roommate and I planted this in 2002. And so you can see they do grow up to a very nice plant. Um, this, this actual plant, um, flowered before all my other ones did, and I went there to try to, fly, uh, to see if it would sell, and it did not also. But I just took this the other day. I drove, when I was driving home, uh, I went by the house, because actually this plant was further back and tucked right up against the fence, and it was all smashed, because we planted it, it was pretty small, and um, my roommate, my old roommate, Alan, we moved it out and transplanted it, and it's all leafed out now, it looks great. So. Okay, and uh, Tim Harvey, I don't know if he's in the house. You hear Tim? There you are. Tim, thank you. Uh, Tim sent me this picture, and, um, and this is one of the rooted cuttings from Woody uh, in 1997. This plant is probably 12 feet tall, I would imagine, 
and um, it's, it's in the uh, Tim Harvey pot right here. <laughs> this is the Tim Harvey pot. Tim, Tim does not uh, usually show too many plants, and, um, and when he does, he shows them in plastic pots, and, and I agree with you, Tim. I think that's great. It's all about the plant. It's, it's not about the pot, even though I, I appreciate all the good potters here, and I love a good pot. So. Um, anyway, um, thank you again, Tim. And you can see this one flowered, and I'm sure it's probably never set seed by itself either, Tim. Yeah. But there's another rooted cutting. Spectacular plant. Um, it's really, really big. Okay. Here's a good friend, Steve Southwell. And this is a famous plant, for those of you that know this plant, this is Fucaria fasciculata. Um, there's an area in Mexico, and the, the pre-convention tour went there. Um, and this is an area called Metztitlan, and uh, it's in Hildalgo. And um, um, they, um, um, Gary James went there. And um, anyway, Steve and, and Woody had gone there many, many years ago. I don't know what year it was, but it was a long time ago. And Woody tells this great story about how they were hiking up into this canyon, and they came to a fork, and Steve took the right, and Woody took the left. And when they both came down a little bit later, this was when they could collect plants legally. And when they came down later, Steve had this plant. Woody had a whole bunch of other ones. And Woody took one look at that plant and said, I'll trade you all of these for that one. <laughs> and Steve said, no, no, no. No, no, no. So, so anyway, this was a wonderful plant. Um, it's sadly, Steve is no longer with us. Um, he... Um, and I think it was in 2001, uh, he died of cancer. He had lymphoma. And, um, but a wonderful, wonderful man. You can tell by that shirt. I mean, who would wear a shirt like that who didn't have a great personality? And, and in 2000, uh, he was at, uh, at the Inner City Show. And after the show, um, I was standing around, and John Traeger was there. And he had made arrangements. John Traeger had made arrangements to take some cuttings of this plant. So I just kind of happened to walk over there and say, hi, <laughs> is there any way? And Steve said, you bet. And so he gave John Traeger a dozen cuttings. I, I got six cuttings. I got four to root. And um, I still have uh, the plant today. And, but this again, this is, his plant still lives on, okay? Here it is in 2009, still on the trophy table. It is a spectacular plant. It is just really beautiful. But uh, here's, here's, the, here's the trip. Um, there's Jeff Kimnick, there's Greg Starr and Brian Kimball. And here's Fasciculata right behind them. With a lot of other really beautiful plants in there. There's, looks like there's almost a Dudleya, uh, some Mammillarias, Agave. Uh, Tillandsias, all different types of things. I, I heard it was a spectacular trip. I thank Gary James for these photos, uh, by the way. Thank you, Gary. And here, here Gary took some pictures of Habitat. Really, really some big fat old plants. This next slide is really spectacular. So they're, they're big. I mean, you can, you can see that that rock is probably a pretty good size. I mean, they're, they're really nice big plants. <coughs> But it is just, these are two, you know, of all the Fucarias, uh, Fasciculata and Purposi are, are a couple of my favorites. So that plant that Steve gave me a cutting of, one of these plants, um, this is uh, uh, 2009, so that's nine years old from a cutting. And the nice thing about uh, Fasciculata is, is in the fall and in December, and even in the spring when it throws off new leaves, the leaves are really a nice burgundy color. They're, it's a really beautiful plant. And here I am in 2004. Uh, Dan Houston, a good friend of mine, who's written plenty of articles and taken take some great sh uh, pictures. You'll see some in here. So this is what the plant looks like um, as of last year. So here we are. We're going to go back in time here. Um, so here's Steve's plant. On the left, this was the year that we had all the good flowering, and here's Purposi. And so, you know, if you've got plants flowering, you, for me as a propagator, I'm like, oh, okay, hey, let's try this, let's, let's try that. Um, so I did some control pollination, and um, we had some success. 
it was really cool because I remember taking that picture and then I said, oh, I'm going to set the same plants up in the same position. And I had those photos stored for the longest time. And here I finally get to use them. <laughs> so, um, so this was great. It was, it was really fun. I, I, they both, both crosses work back and forth. So, so this is some of the offspring from this. Now the father, or the, actually the, you, when, you, when you specify plants, uh, the first plant is the mother plant or the, or the seed parent, and then the second is the pollen parent. So here, uh, this was a rooted cutting from Woody, and then the pollen parent was from Steve. And that's May of this year. Uh, there's, three of, there's three of these plants, three really spectacular ones that, that turned out. This is another one. The first one took on more of the purpose eye, so more of a conical look. Uh, this one is more fat, broad-based. And the leaf is somewhere in between. Um, uh, Purposite leaf is long and linear, and, uh, and the uh, fasciculata leaf is a little bit shorter and fatter. But here, you know, I put this up here because, um, because of these two guys, we have these plants today, okay? Um, because Woody had collected those plants and gave me those cuttings in 1997, and Steve Saldoa was so generous, that cross produced this. And um, I think that, you know, I'm not trying to brag about that. That's, this is what the plant did. But this is what happens when, when you have people that share their plant material and their expertise, and, and you, you're just lucky enough to get them together at the same time. Okay, so we're going back in time again. <laughs> and Woody is just tired. He is exhausted. He's exhausted. Actually, he was in a in an airport in Peru, but I had to use this. I wanted to yell, wake up, Woody, wake up. And I was gonna put an audio in there and have him say, what, what? So anyway, but here, well, Woody was sleeping. I was again busy in, in 2006. More purpose eye flowers. But when these purpose eye flowers bloomed in that December, there was nothing, there was not another purpose eye there was plenty of flower buds, but when this first uh, few panicles opened, there was nothing else to, to, to pollinate it with. Um, now, here's Ficaria McDougalli. And here's another plant that came from Woody Minich. And uh, Woody had this plant up at his nursery, um, up in Little Rock, up in the desert. And uh, I had remember seeing this plant up there, and Woody said, it never blooms here. And so um, I said, oh. I bet it would bloom at my place in Orange County. And so he said, well, make me an offer. So I had a small little greenhouse that was a propagation greenhouse that someone had donated to the college. So I said, how about this? And he said, great. So I got a flatbed trailer and took this greenhouse up there and then brought this back. It was pouring rain. Uh, it was quite a day. We got it back. We planted it in the ground. But um, it has some spectacular flowers. It's really pretty flowers. Again, this is, this is my friend Dan Houston. He took a lot of these pictures. Um, so he really did a great job. So I took uh, McDougal Eye, being the pollen parent, and crossed it with, uh, with Purpose Eye, the seed parent. And uh, this is just a, a little demo that, we put, that I put in here to, just to give you an idea. But um, here they are. This is in the greenhouse. So you can see down here, this has not opened yet, but I had two panicles that had opened. So I went in there and, and brought a lot of uh, McDougal eye flowers and just uh, pollinated all those flowers. So it, it, it's interesting. I ran out of white tags, and um, I guess that might have been a sign. So here it is. This is Purpose Eye McDougal eye, uh, December 15th uh, in 2006. So 15 months later from seed is this plant. And um, it was amazing. Um, and this is what they call hybrid vigor. Um, sometimes when you do crosses, you get, a, you get the prodigy from that that is just amazingly fast and vigorous. And this is what it's called. It's called hybrid vigor. It's kind of a goofy picture of me. I didn't want to put that in there, but it looks like I'm like a crane looking out over the, this thing. But the flowers turned out pink. And um, uh, McDougal eye has a very closed flower and purpose eye is a little bit more open. So it, it took on 
uh, that color, that really nice pink color, and, uh, but the flower looked m much more like it. Um, this is sort of like making the cover of the Rolling Stone, okay? <laughs> and, and Dan Houston, my friend, took this picture, um, and, and he did a wonderful job, and he's co-authored a, a lot of articles with me, and he's a great writer, and I wish he could be here today, but he's not, so we will just give him some kudos. But um, here we are, we, we made the cover, and then once again, we did an ISI listing of this plant. So thank you again, Woody. Um, you know, your plant, your two plants, is, and this is what's come about. Um, so, you know, just by chance, um, now John Traeger uh, came to the nursery, saw the plant, and said, yes, we would love to introduce this. This would be a great plant. And so he goes, but you have to, you know, it's published now, or you're going to publish it, let's, let's name it. So um, we knocked around with a bunch of different things, but it had a white, it, the parent, uh, you know, the seed parent was white, the pollen parent was, was red, and so it was pink, and my last name is Stead, so we called it Pink Instead. And I thank John Traeger, he's not here, but he, he kind of came up with that, and so we went with that. So, and here I am in the nursery um, with, uh, with my little Sheltie, Nikki. So this is, uh, this is a 2013, and uh, in May of this year, I came down with a good friend of mine, Sean, who's here today as a ground supervisor of Orange Coast College. We came here to look at the campus. Because, uh, because of the drought, um, Orange Coast College has 164 acres, and, and we're, I'm on a landscape committee there with Sean and some other of the horticulture instructors. And so we want to create something, and you know, I knew about this, uh, because when I, when I was teaching my classes, I teach a class on cactus and succulents and their uses in the landscape. And this started about nine years ago. And, and Woody has come, Michael Buckner has come, but Joe Clements has come also. And um, whenever he would come, he would always leave with plants. And this is one of the plants that he left with. So um, when I got here, you know, he said, oh, we're, we're, I'll show you some plants later, Joe, that you brought me. And, and I nearly fell out, out of the electric cart when, I, when we drove up to this. Because mine, mine doesn't look like that yet. And I, I have some small ones in the ground. But this was better than making the cover of the Rolling Stone, or I mean the, the journal. <laughs> this was better. I mean, look at my face. I was like, oh my God, look at that. It was spectacular. So great landscape plant, and that just made my day. OK, here we are. We're moving on to Socotra. Uh, this is John Avranos and Gary James uh, standing next to a cucumber tree in Socotra, 1999. Here's Gary. He's getting up close and personal with this, <laughs> with this uh, denium. So Katrana. He was on the cover, actually, of, of that, I think, that year. He's sitting in front of a much larger one than this. But Gary, you look the same. You haven't changed a bit. Um, one of the plants that they brought back uh, legally from that trip was Boswell Anana. And um, wonderful little plant. When it was described in the journal, it was, in, and I received three of these plants, um, uh, thanks to Gary and John Lebronis, and Bruno Mize was on that trip also. And, and thanks to them, um, we, we received these plants. But I, I read the description on this, and they said they had never seen the flower. And so I was like, oh. That's a challenge for me. I mean, I, I've got to get this thing to flower. So um, Todd took this picture, and he took that last picture, Todd Masoko. Um, as you can see, it's way up in, the, in a mountainous area. You can see a valley down below. The goats have gotten to this one and just uh, nibbled it way back. Maybe that's why they had never seen any flowers. But here it is in 2004. This was in, the, in one of the greenhouses, fully leafed out. We did get it to flower. It was, a, it was a little timid at first, but I did get it to uh, flower and set seed. And um, this is some of the photos of it as it, the flower and seed. Great picture of the seed pod. It opens up four seeds inside that. And the, 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 the actual base of the plant is very, very, well, it's really, really a whitish form that is another great shot. They really can be very, very colorful, that new growth. Be super, super colorful. 
And again, here we are. We, we, have, we had another ISI listing. Um, Gary and I wrote an article on this in the journal, and um, it was a lot of fun. It was a really a lot of fun. And again, thank you, Gary. Uh, Gary is a dean of, was the dean of, of math and science at Orange Coast College. So all these things have kind of worked into, into place. Or I, would, or I never would have known him. Um, okay, and this is Boswell and Nana. This is in a, in a five inch pot. This sits on my patio uh, in the back of my condo. It's a nice little plant, very, very tight. So they can get large, but they can be small. Also on that trip, they brought back Boswellia popoviana. And um, I did get it to flower in the greenhouse, but it did not. I tried to self it. It did not. It would not self. And um, it's more of an arborescent. It's a tree-like. Um, but the flowers are really spectacular. But a really cool plant. But again, that pollinator, Joe, he had to get in there again. Nice ladybug on here. Of course, we won't say anything about the, the soft scale here. I think the ladybug's heading down towards that. But um, uh, crossed uh, Nana with Popoviana, and we'll, we'll see this plant a little bit later. Um, but those are the flowers from it. Um, and then also, um, I had received some plants uh, um, uh, some uh, Boswellia sacra, and so I crossed that. Um, a lot of times if you pollinate these plants, they're very, very nectary. And, and one paintbrush, your, your paintbrush is shot because it's just soaked with, with all kinds of pollen. So one thing that I learned is that I would remove those anthers with a small pair of tweezers. It took a long time, and you would try to put the plants together, but you would take the tweezers and you would pull these anthers off and then go over to the stigma of the female or of the of the other flower and pollinate it like that. So um, this was a great cross. This worked out really well. Again, here I am at Pitzer. That was the day I saw Pink instead. Boom! Here's a here's a big plant, and Joe said you donated this, and I'm like, oh my gosh! I looked at it. I knew exactly what it was, but um, huge, huge, huge plant. And here it is, like Nana. It's crawling along the ground. And then here is the same thing I had planted at Orange Coast College. This is in the garden that those of you that were on the trip uh, the other day, this is up on, on the island. Uh, it's Madagascar and Socotra Island up, up in our planting here. But here it is draping over the rock. Really spectacular. Okay, and then here's some friends. Uh, this is Jason Esbeleth and Patty Lannis. They run a business um, uh, in... Um, in Mesa, Arizona, called Minia Tree Gardens. And they have a couple of these large Moringa Hildebrandtis in front of their, um, front of their nursery. They're really beautiful, beautiful plants. But um, what uh, Jason really specializes in is a lot of the Boswellias. Here's Boswellia sacra in the ground. Um, gets cold there. So um, I know it wasn't Christmas time, but he puts uh, these lights on it and then covers them sometimes because of the cold because it'll freeze there and it can really damage these plants. Um, he's been very generous. Uh, he's donated some plants to the college. We've done some trading back and forth. And um, here's another very, very good friend who's here today. This is Ed Reed. Uh, he runs the greenhouses over at Cal State Fullerton and um, in, their, um, in their biology department. Um, if you've ever been there, um, he, he is a great, great plantsman. Here's a plant. This is Boswellia sacra uh, or carteri also. The, the plant before that, that came from Yemen. This one is, this actually came from Somalia. It's a little bit different. And um, this plant came as a root cutting. The Boswellias can be uh, propagated from the roots. Okay, you can cut the root off and, and plant that and it will grow leaves, okay, from root cuttings. And so um, Chuck Hansen from Arid Lands sent Leo Song, which was Ed's predecessor, um, some rooted cuttings in 1993. And in 2004, they planted this in the ground. I think it was like a five gallon or so, Ed, in 2004. And you can tell this plant is massive now. Now Fullerton uh, gets really good heat and um, it's in a great spot there, but um, it's, a, it's a really a spectacular plant. Okay, and here we are, we're back in Socotra. And uh, this is again, uh, Todd Masilko, and I think he went there with Kelly. 
and some other people. I don't know what year that was, Kelly, but um, took some great pictures. And um, this is Boswelli Ilongata. It's a great, wonderful tree that grows there amongst a lot of other Boswellias. But here's another spectacular photo. Um, this is Jason's plant um, that he got through a gentleman called Boris. And that came, um, he works uh, in the oil industry over in Socotra and he's collected uh, seedlings and seed from there. And this is a, a plant that's growing in Jason's backyard. Um, I had actually got some seed um, through Jerry Wright and through Boris. And this, this is actually a cutting that came from Jason, one of Jason's plants. Uh, this is a six-year-old. That's in a 15-gallon pot, and it's probably about three feet tall right now. It's a very, very fast-growing tree, and it's a really a re very beautiful tree. So we did get it to flower. Um, Jason had not ever been able to get his to flower. I don't know why. Um, we're very close to the coast, Orange Coast College. It's only five miles from the coast, and we, we have a very good climate there. But again, here we are uh, removing the, the anthers, uh, the pollen, and, and pollinating. This one will not self also, okay? And so, um, but luckily I had two clones uh, flowering that year. Close up of the flowers, kind of a nice yellow. This one had a double, it was a double flower. The stigma was really fat, it almost looked like it was crested. Um, usually they have uh, um, around three to five seeds as you pollinate them, but here's, the, here's all the, here's the seed pods. This is a big fat one on the end here. So that's a dime, so it gives you an idea of the size of that seed pot. It's very large. And again, they usually have, you know, five seeds, three to five seeds. They had 11 seeds in it. Now, the only problem is, do they germinate? Do you get good germination rates? Not very good. Not very good at all. Um, that's a little cap that went over that. Um, some of them sat in the propagation beds for a long time and I went through and popped some of them off and there was no embryo inside. There was nothing there. So it formed seed, but there was nothing inside. So it was a sterile seed. But we did get some. And um, this is an 18-month-old seedling. Um, the leaves are, are very different. These are the juvenile leaves. Uh, later on, they'll get a little, a little larger here. Okay, what, what happened to that Nana Popoviana cross? Oh, well, we had, some, uh, we had some elongata going that year, and this was blooming at the same time. So this, being, this was the seed parent. And uh, boy, I got a good germination rate on those. Very good. Again, that hybrid vigor. So, um, and, um, so that was in August of 2014, and here we are in June of 2015. So here's regular Boswellia elongata here. And there's the cross. And it looks very much like it. It's, it's growing larger. And um, uh, that year, I think I only got maybe seven or eight uh, seedlings out of 140 seeds. So the germination rate was really low. On the cross, I got like 25 seeds. 20, I, got 20, I think I got 25 seeds, I got 23 seedlings. So the germination rate was very good. Okay, here we are back in Socotra. This is Commifera planifrons. Um, Gary, um, uh, and this was done by, as a photo by Todd, and Gary and um, John Lavranos uh, via um, Tom McCoy had uh, got some cuttings into my hands. And um, uh, the only, they're also, they're a dioecious plant, they're uh, separate sexes on, on each plant, so this was a male. Um, we did an article, Dan Houston and I wrote an article on this, on this plant. Uh, copious amounts of pollen, really a lot of pollen on these plants. And um, finally did get a female um, in our possession, but it took me three years to figure out how to pollinate it. I mean, I, I did everything I could think of. I called all kinds of people. I called Tim, I called Jean Joseph, I called in Tucson, I called a bunch of people uh, trying to figure out how to pollinate this. Um, I could get a ton of pollen on the stigmatic surface of the female, but it would not set seed. So um, the, the year that I figured it out was um, 
I pulled the flowers off gently with a pair of tweezers, put them in a petri dish, stuck them with this uh, little probe that we use um, in the biology labs, and I went right over top of the flower and tapped it, and the pollen just dropped down. Before I was using a paintbrush and I was dabbing it right on the stigmatic surface of the female, it must have damaged it. It would not set. But as soon as I tapped it, could not touch that stigma, could not. But as soon as I tapped the little bit of pollen on there, it was no problem. Set seed. And as you can see, very little pollen on there. There's, the, there's the, uh, the, the female flower and there's the seed set on the right, on the left. I mean. So here's the same, exact same picture, uh, exact same. Uh, so it's set, set. They turn kind of a reddish color and then um, they will dry up um, and then you can pull them off. They persist on the plant for a long time. We did get some seedlings. The germination rate isn't the best, but we did get some seedlings. So, um, okay, another story. This is Jerry Wright from the Great Petaluma Desert. And, um, you know, I had gotten some uh, Opercolocaria decarii uh, plants from Gary James. And, um, and he had a, a female plant so that came from um, Manny Singer. And so I had gotten a couple of those plants together and I was producing some cuttings and some seedlings. And, um, and then I heard about, uh, uh, about uh, Jerry Wright in, in, uh, of the Great Petaluma Desert. And uh, he was bringing in a lot of plants out of Madagascar. So collected plants and uh, I didn't have any money. And, and I was, it was sorry to see a lot of these plants coming in and, and they just, I, I know a lot of them died. Uh, they never made it. And so um, I called Jerry up one day and I said, I said, Jerry, I said, you don't know me from Adam. But, and I introduced myself and I told him what I did. And I said, I'll make it worth your while if you give me some of these plants. I'll propagate them. I'll either do cuttings, I'll create some seed. And the plant that you would have sold one time, I'm gonna, every year I'm gonna come back in December after those poinsettias get out of there. And I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna bring you a bunch of seedlings or cuttings. And, and pretty soon I'll be able to pay off that debt. And so he said, let me think about it. So I called him back a couple more times because he didn't call me back. So finally he said, you know what? You're pretty persistent. Come up, come up and, and visit me. And so I did, I went up there and visited him. And this is some of the stuff that I saw and I was like, oh my gosh. I, I, I was appalled. Uh, and I'm sure, I'm sure um, Anj is, is a, a Paul too, because you know they didn't they didn't just pull them out of the ground. They actually cut them off. They had no roots whatsoever at all. Luckily, they had a little bit of succulents in here to to keep them through, but they were shipped over here. I know a lot of these plants died. I know they did. Um, some of them made it. This is a, a species that probably hardly anybody's ever seen. This is Opercolocaria hirsutissima. It's a, it's a long skinny tree. Uh, people don't aren't really interested in it because it's not it's not a fat plant it's not a bonsai plant, but it's a plant that came from Madagascar um, and I have some of these. Um, you know I guess Jerry had a hard time selling them so I took a, a bunch of them back, and I got a bunch of them to root, so they're growing on. Um, these are the ones that everybody wanted, and why wouldn't you? I mean look at that they would make it that's a perfect I mean this doesn't have any roots on it you could put it in a show and probably win a, a ribbon. But what is happening, you know, to these plants? They're, most of them are dying. So um, I learned something years ago, and it's tried to try to save some of this stuff, try to propagate it, get it back out there, and see if we can, you know, get rid of all that craving and see if you can grow some of these plants on. So here's what they look like in 2005 when they got back. This is Hyphenoides, one of my favorite of the genus. So how do you root something like that? You know, it wasn't easy. It was not easy. Of course, I, I took my bottle brush that I used to clean the, the uh, test tubes with, and I made up some solution of, uh, 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 this is uh, dip and, well, actually, at that time, it wasn't dip and grow, but it's IBA and NAA. It's uh, rooting hormones. And we cut them off till we got to good flesh, and then uh, painted on uh, the rooting hormone, and then put them in our propagation greenhouse, which I'm so lucky to have. Uh, this is bottom heat and it has fog and mist. So 
It doesn't get below um, usually 80 degrees in there at any time and the humidity stays around 90 percent. And so a lot of these did root up and they did quite well. Um, here's Pachypus, Opercolicaria Pachypus, and some of those rooted up also. But why, why would people want these plants? Because they look like this, okay? This plant came from Michael Buckner. It's, it was a male. I borrowed it just to, for pollen purposes. But that's what people would, they would see that and then they would call Jerry or call some of these other places and that they would buy these things. And, and as long as people are buying them or bringing them into the country, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna keep exporting them, which is totally wrong. Okay, seed, seed propagation. Here's the carii, here's the male flower. Again, they're dioecious, so they're separate sexes. Again, lucky enough to get a female. Um, here we are with the camel hair brush, but this is just a, a prop here. They're wind pollinated. A lot of people didn't think that, but they are. Um, here I collected a bunch of flowers in the petri dish, and I would go along with the tweezers and just dab them on the tops. And it worked, but later on I found that you really don't need to do that. So here's seed set of Dakarii. Here's what the ripe seed looks like. It looks like a raisin. Um, when they drop off, they're hard to find. So you usually you put a white piece of paper below it um, or just try to catch them right as they're coming off. Here's the droop uh, and the seed. Um, okay, and this is Dakarii after one month. They call this plant opercolicaria because um, operculum means hatch or cap, okay? And uh, caria means nut. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nut with a hatch is what it is. And that's a little hatch that opens up and then the, the radical comes out and then the plant pushes its way through. Okay, here's Pachypus uh, ma uh, male flower and it has a yellowish flower. So you can usually tell these uh, very easily apart if it's pachypus by the flower. Here's the female flower and seed set. And the, and the seeds, they go from kind of a lime green to an orangish to a total red. They drop off very easily when they turn red, so you have to you know, catch them. There you can see the opercolate right here, the hatch. Okay, and here's the carii, here's the seedlings. Same date uh, that we sowed, and here's pachypus, very, very small. Decaria grows into a large tree. Pachypus is more of a smaller, smaller bush. Here's Decaria, 18 months. A lot of these, um, a lot of these below ground roots uh, will snap off, and you can grow that as a root cutting. Uh, and, and they form quite spectacular roots. This is a root cutting right here. I call this the spider. It has eight legs. And all this was below ground. And you just, you would cut it off. You make sure where you plant it. You don't want to plant it upside down. And then a lot of times the branches uh, fan out horizontally. And then you just prune it back. Um, this is a Dakari that was seed grown in 2007. That's a small little pot. The total height from the plant up to the top is seven and a half inches. So it's really small. It's a nice little. If, you know, if you like, if you like little bonsais. Here's a plant that was seed grown. This was 14 years ago. This was Dakarii. This was a male. This is in the garden at the college. Pachypus, two years old. This is my oldest pachypus that I've grown from seed. That's an Erica von Ocker pot. It's 10 inches across. It's not a very big plant. It's spectacular. It's a really beautiful plant, but it's, you know, it'll take probably another 50 years to look like some of those collected ones. It, maybe it'll never look like that, but it might be as big. But those plants are, are so, so old. And, and a, lot of, a lot of times I've found that those do not, a lot of times they, they kind of die off. Okay, something uh, very peculiar that happens sometimes is biocular seedlings. You'll have two seedlings in one seed pot. Okay. And here it is. There's the, there's the, they had two hatches. There's one here and one here. And they came up as twins. So I, I always thought it was really interesting when I first saw it. I, and I just, I just had some hyphenoides that I just had one come up like that. I, I always sew them in individual pots so I can see. Um, here's one that's here on the right. There's a single and there's one with a double. 
So I never separated them. I always thought, you know, they came up together and I'm not going to separate them. You know? And so as it turned out, it's female and male. Okay? And, and it's interesting because the, the male is very big. And the female is very demure and small. And so I thought that was an interesting fact also. And um, just left them in the greenhouse. I knew that this, I, you know, I had, I had sexed these before. I knew that, that they were male and female. But it's interesting that, they, that here in nature, they came up. They didn't, they're dioecious, so you know, they need a male and female. They came up together. They're a couple from the beginning. And they're going to be a couple until I have them or somebody else has them. That's an arranged marriage. Exactly. <laughs> so it'll be interesting. This will be the first year that I'm actually going to sow these seeds and grow these on. So maybe in another talk we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, you could say that. but Okay, this is another uh, uh, interesting plant. This is a, a plant that came from Keith Taylor, and I, I was surprised that he wasn't here at the, at the convention. Keith uh, lives up in Sacramento, not far from, from Jerry Wright. And um, he had a hyphenoides male, and it would produce uh, these perfect flowers. Okay. And, and there you can see up at the top left, here's a total male flower, and there's, there's a, a female flower right there. Now it has staminoids. The female has staminoids. But the interesting thing is, is that... You know, you can see, and, and it would usually only happen uh, at, the, at the tip, all the way at the end of the panicle. And so they would come out. I didn't have to pollinate, the, pollinate those at all. When they were closed up in the flower and they would start to open, I was, you know, I was looking and you could see the stigma. Where the other ones, all you could see was the staminodes. And you could just see it. And, and it was already, before, the, before the, the petals had all opened fully, it was already forming seed. So I didn't, I didn't touch it at all. The seed was definitely viable. Beautiful leaf, by the way, of hyphenoides. One of, the, one of my favorites. And, and one of the largest seeds. Big, big seed. Almost the size of a dime. So this is, um, I was lucky enough to, all, of all the plants, all the hyphenoides that came from Jerry Wright, I had one female. And, um, this is the gem or the jewel, I think, of the genus. Um, it has the most beautiful leaves. It does form a very nice base, um, but the seedlings are spectacular. They're really nice. Um, I've, I've been growing this for three years now, or I've been setting seed for three years now. I only have like 35 seedlings, but I did promise the Huntington, I see Karen out there, I did promise the Huntington that we would, they would do an ISI for this because I think it's one of the, one of the more spectacular plants. And here is one of the seedlings here in a six inch pot. Uh, it's three years old. They're slow. They're very slow. They're not as slow as, as Pachypus, but they are slow. Okay, um, I put this in here for our friend from Madagascar. And um, uh, this came from Jerry Wright also. I was up there and, um, and uh, he was selling some of these plants that were dug up and, and shipped over. Um, it had no roots at the bottom and they cut the top right off. This plant is quite big. And um, so um, Jerry said, why don't you take this back with you? And I did, and it's grown very well. I put it in a big pot, and hopefully this year uh, we'll put it into the ground. I, I, I didn't bring a, a leaf with me, but it came as digitata, so, so I'm not, and I know digitata is more mainland. It's not a, it's not a Madagascar uh, endemic. but. Um, but I, it, when I first started to grow this on, I mean, it was leafing out all over the place. So I, I prunes it off and try to get it into a singular. There's one, one good terminal there, but it has like three branches on it now. But again, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get these plants back out. Okay, so, so to end my talk, um, these are some of my students in my class. And um, this is the future. I mean, these are the students, the, the people that are around us, the youth that are around us, we need to be more like the Woodies and, and all the other people that helped. Uh, Ed, Ed's a really young guy. These are people that try to influence other people on trying to cultivate these plants and get them out 
and have people put them in their gardens. And, and this is a great time right now because of the drought um, and what Joe has done here uh, at Pitzer. And, uh, and I thank you so much. <laughs>